If you're a parent who's a little bit terrified about how you and your children are going to survive the summer holidays, I don't blame them. If the weather tends to be standard British summertime weather, the next 10 minutes might be the best investment you make this year. Tip number one, it's really important to set realistic expectations, both for you and for them. So for you, if you are basically staring down the barrel of a six week summer holidays, it's not all gonna be plain sailing. In fact, it'll probably be, if you're lucky, 50% sailing and 50% try not to drown in a sea of parenting, stress, and looking for charges and arguments about whatever 11, nine, and six year olds argue about this week. Don't set yourself up for a fall by setting unrealistic targets that every minute of every day of their summer holidays has to be jam packed with fun and laughter, that everyone's gonna get on, that everyone's gonna be happy, that everyone's gonna enjoy themselves, and it won't cost you anything. If you're anything like us, you're probably wondering how you're gonna survive the summer holidays and afford to keep the lights on. Pesto pasta, that's the fourth time this week. It's also really important to manage your children's expectations. No doubt they all have lots of friends whose parents have more money to underwrite six weeks of family summer holiday-tastic fun. I just explained to my kids that money's tight at the moment that what their summer holidays might lack in plasticky, glitzy, rubbishy toys, it will be more than made up for in dad's efforts at trying to keep them entertained. Tip number two, even though it's the summer holidays and they're at home, try and establish the same sort of routine you would during term time when you have to get them up, get them ready and out to school. The problems seem to happen when the days lack any structure. Sometimes the idea of getting through a day inside because the weather's rubbish with three kids who are all telling you they're bored at about 8.14 is utterly overwhelming. Don't think about the whole day, think about the next hour. There's things you can do to make it fun. Maybe try and turn your kitchen into a restaurant. Draw yourself on a comedy moustache, adopt yourself a horribly inappropriate un PC French accent, and tell them a continental breakfast will be served every day between eight o'clock and nine o'clock. It would be fantastic. I thought you were going for French. Having a routine will also help to explain to them they can't just sit on their gadgets all day. So maybe have breakfast and then they're allowed an hour of screen time. And then if you're lucky enough to have a garden, maybe 10 minutes of an activity outside before lunch, maybe another half an hour to an hour of activities or meditation or yoga or trampolining outside. Or if you live close to a park, maybe go to the park after lunch. Then maybe after that, allow them a bit more screen time. Then maybe get them involved with preparing an evening meal. Then maybe an evening meal, followed by maybe some card games. Then no doubt an hour of tears and questioning of the rules and who mum and dad's favourite is before bath, story, bed, and a massive drink for mummy and daddy. Tip number three, make sure to practice self-care. Those are the parents, whether you like it or not, as the oldest in the house, the authoritarian figures in the house, you are basically in charge of managing this family summer holiday extravaganza. That sounds terrifying. It is. With that in mind, it's really important that you take some time every day to keep your own sanity. If they're all on their gadgets and quite quiet, and one of you wants to go for a walk, that would be a good time. There's gonna be activities that requires both parents' participation, and there'll be activities that don't. Making sure that both of you have some time during the day to yourself, that you both don't completely lose your minds, is a really good idea. If the term parental self-care is something you've never heard of and you'd like to watch a video on it, you can click this link here. And tip number four for surviving the summer holidays, make sure to communicate effectively. This is a nice follow-on from the previous tip, because it's very difficult to communicate effectively when you feel like you want to scream into a pillow. If your kids are having a massive argument or fight, the best thing to do is to separate them. But then take the time to make sure that you listen to everyone's side of the story so that all parties feel heard. With that in mind, it's important to try and listen to everyone about what they want to do that day. If you have more than one child, this will probably resonate, but it is absolutely impossible to keep everyone happy all the time. It just won't happen. So for example, in our case, if you have three children, you might have to think of three activities that each person wants to do per day. This is going to demand you to be creative, but you can totally do this. Do you really believe that? I'm not sure. I think so. And tip number five for surviving the summer holidays, build a support network. If you and your wife are at home trying to keep your kids entertained, 
you are each other's immediate support. But that said, there are almost certainly other families or the parents of your children's friend who are equally desperate and trying to keep their kids entertained. If one of your children goes out for a play date for a couple of hours, that day has instantly got easier. And I've often found that quite often having one of my kids' friends over for a play date weirdly actually makes it easier. Your children tend to behave better and at least one of your children is happy. And tip number six, to completely contradict tip number two, make sure to be flexible. It is very important to try and plan as much as you can, but if you live in Britain, the weather might easily chuck a spanner in the work. It's probably more helpful to have a list of activities you can do when it's raining to when the weather's good. We're really lucky to live by the coast, so we're gonna make sure that we have lots of days on the beach, probably with fairly inexpensive homemade picnics, so that really the only expense is a horrendously overpriced ice cream, that it's completely impossible to get them either to the beach or from the beach without them seeing. If the activities you've planned for the day as team leader, summer holiday extravaganza project manager, and bizarrely, your three children have managed to agree on something else they want to do, then go with that. And tip number seven for surviving the summer holidays, focus on the positives. If the majority of the day goes well, apart from one argument two minutes before bedtime, that's been a good day. Being a parent is not easy. Being a parent trying to entertain your children while maybe also work from home during the summer holidays, pretty impossible. Be kind to yourself. Celebrate the wins. I almost guarantee it that there'll be times during the next six weeks summer holiday where you do not feel like putting a positive spin on it. But as the commander of chief, head honcho, project manager, you have to. You need to celebrate all the victories, however few or far between they might be, and the positive moments. Maybe take some video clips and at the end of each week or the end of each day, create a little film about your summer holidays. That also might be a really good way to help them get entertained. They can do the filming. You might even be able to teach them a very useful skill of editing. And you might find that's a really helpful way to pass some time in the summer holidays. And this segues beautifully onto tip number eight. That's convenient. The summer holidays is a great opportunity to teach them some responsibilities. I remember summer holidays earning lots of pocket money by watering flowers, making beds, cleaning the house, you may have children that this would appeal to, who won't question the hourly rate. The Geneva Convention would have you over a barrel. Getting kids to help make meals, clean up, walk the dog, create their own activities, might really inspire them, teach them some life skills, and more importantly, take the pressure off you and your partner. And tip number nine for surviving the summer holidays, prioritize quality time together. If, like me, you've got an 11-year-old, a 9-year-old, a 6-year-old, or children near to those ages, you may well find you've just become cringy dad. This is a very clear indication that the times that your kids genuinely want to spare with you, because you're not quite embarrassing yet, are numbered. A nice thing to do, maybe not every day, but if the weather's crap, is bolt by some popcorn and sit down and watch a classic Disney family film. You turn the lights off, make the room as much like a cinema as possible, and just do your best to try and enjoy each other's company. And my last tip, tip number 10, let go of guilt. Understand that no parent is perfect. Remind yourself that you're doing your best and global and economic circumstances are far from perfect. No one has lots of money. Trying to do anything is incredibly expensive, way more than expensive than it used to be. Yes, there will be moments where you feel like you're letting your kids down because you haven't taken them to Disney World, but your love, and energy is actually what they'll end up remembering. The times you sat down as a family, had a cuddle and watched a film, the time dad got covered in flour when you were trying to make pizzas, and the time you got the giggles playing all those ridiculous activities that dad was suggesting will become the core positive memories that they hold on to as adults. I've also created a stress management course for parents. If you'd like completely free access to it, just go to my website, www.dadmindmatters.com. The only downside that in order to do so, you need to join our mailing list and I might try and sing you a ukulele song on your birthday. I really hope you got some of this video. And if you like what I'm trying to do to support other parents, please share it with someone and maybe even think about subscribing. Worst case scenario, if I start annoying you after a month, you can always unsubscribe. That's what I did. All right, wherever you're in the world, you're okay. Take care.